This is a pawpaw, North America's largest native fruit. These trees can be found growing wild in forests throughout the eastern, southern, and midwestern United States. Since they're native to North America, pawpaws are well adapted for life in our climate. And when they're grown in an orchard setting, they become a high-value, low-input, sustainable crop perfect for small farmers. Pawpaw fruits taste like a delicious mix between banana and mango with a texture of a ripe avocado. But if you've never had the chance to try a pawpaw, you're not alone. They may taste great and grow really well, but they're limited by their short shelf life. Ripe pawpaws can only be kept for a couple of days at room temperature before going bad, or a little bit longer in the fridge. But luckily, we have the tools to solve this problem. There is a ton of variation in wild pawpaws all around the country, and we've seen how just a couple generations of plant breeding can make a big difference in fruit size and quality. Plant breeding is pretty straightforward. You take the pollen from one great tree and put it onto the flowers of another high-quality tree. Those pollinated flowers will grow into fruit, which will have seeds that contain the genetics of both parents. If you save those seeds and plant them, you can grow thousands of seedlings. And when those trees grow and make fruit, you can find the ones that have the best combination of traits from their parents. We are Project Pawpaw. We're a crowdfunded research and breeding program dedicated to bringing pawpaws to the people. Here's some of the work that we've been doing to help us choose the best possible parents to create the next generation of pawpaw trees. We collect lots of data about the weight of pawpaws and the ratio of flesh to seeds. We've developed protocols that help us measure things like skin thickness and fruit firmness, which impact shelf life. And we've been using digital image analysis software to look at things like skin color, flesh color, and even the shape of the fruit itself. Of course, one of the most important things to select for is taste. And we've held consumer taste test trials to help us collect important data about what people want. We conduct post-harvest storage trials to see if there are differences between different varieties and how long they can last after being picked. We also perform important research to help us accelerate the plant breeding process, such as seed treatments or grafting material from young trees onto established trees to get them to flower faster. We've made a lot of progress in all these areas, but this year has by far been the most exciting yet. Project Pawpaw hit the road on a two-month crowdfunding campaign that took us all around the United States where we met farmers, growers, nurserymen, researchers, and everyone in between. We tabled at four pawpaw festivals and saw tens of thousands of people that were united by their love of pawpaws. We shipped out hundreds of our select pawpaw seedlings to be planted all over the country. And we made plans for our first large-scale research and breeding orchard, which is going in the ground this spring. And the coolest part is that all of this work was directly funded by regular people who believe in our mission. We are going to make the best varieties of pawpaws in the world. Fruits that taste great, grow well, and last longer, and which provide economic viability to small farmers. Trees that need fewer inputs and help protect our precious soil and water. And along the way, we're going to plant a ton of trees. We couldn't do it without you, and we can't do it without you, so we want to thank you for investing in a fruit from here, for here, for prioritizing a diversified, localized, and resilient food system, and for supporting Project Pawpaw. Thank you.